M, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call on Mr. Sajan. He's the VP Global for Innovations and Strategy, Northern Communications, India Limited, to give us the introductory remarks. Please, enough applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable uh, dignitaries on and off the dais. This is a moment of pleasure uh, to, to sit together. Now we are talking about two countries who are sharing the same spirit, who are who were facing the same challenges and we were traveling the same path. Uh, when I'm saying this, it's not only the political uh, history. Now on a telecom background, see, uh, typically you also started it in the uh, 90s, the privatization, the, the, the remarkable step towards this kind of an exponential uh, growth in the industry. And in India, we also uh, did the same thing. In mid 90s, uh, we were also participating. And your uh, GPTC, the old uh, government body, to the Vestal, uh, uh, then to uh, the Millicom, uh, or maybe now Ariba to your uh, today's MTN or maybe Odafone, that travel. Similar one, we had it in India also, like from the DOT uh, to the uh, MDNL and VSNL and then to today's of uh, Geos and, uh, uh, you know, Odafone or Airtel of the world. So this travel, uh, if you look at the growth percentage, uh, I think uh, we were all together, like, you know, we were at par uh, in every segment. And when you... Uh, you know, look at the per capita GDP also, we, we, we share the same pattern. And now uh, looking at the future, so this has opened up a new avenue. I would say the opportunities are there for everyone. That is uh, what is more important when we talk about telcos. Now the data is available. Available is one thing. But it should be affordable also, right? So it should be affordable to the general public in the right kind of a prices. That is what India did. And I'm sure that you also must be following the same. Now uh, we have to look at the future. So now we are at the one point wherein our sir was mentioning India uh, could do a you know, great breaking in terms of building on top of this telecom infrastructure. We could work on the digital divide, I would say. The, we could make the knowledge economy approach. And today, we have got that heavy skill set in India, wherein we can literally compete with anybody in the world because the youth is powered with the telecom infrastructure. So I represent a UK headquartered company called Norden. We are into the ELV solutions like you know you are you name it uh, on the ELV sector like we have the structured cabling, you have the data cabling, you have uh, uh, you have the CCTV, you have the uh, you know, uh, public address system. So anything on the ELV, we, we talk about that. Now on top of that, to address the new arena, we wanted to come with the IoT. We wanted to come up solutions on the uh, artificial intelligence. So that time, we started off thinking of India. And six years back, we started in India, or, uh, you know, back office, we started building. Today, uh, the r and is now, the headquarters is getting moved to India. 
and our manufacturing uh, facilities on the CCTV and other uh, active components are going to be from India in 2023. So it's a huge potential uh, base that uh, India is providing. And let us associate together to share the uh, knowledge each other, to the technology each other, and to facilitate and give affordable solutions to the public and thereby build the country's economy and you know join hands together uh, to build a great uh, way forward. When I say IoT, it's all about data again. Now, what do you mean by data? Data is always available and based on data only we were taking decision. But getting the relevant data is very important. For example, I will, uh, since I was mentioning IoT, maybe one of the happening area is the smart city in India. I will just mention and I will not take too much of time. Now, it's, we are already late. So I wanted to conclude with that. So smart city is one of the major initiatives that India government uh, is doing. We are already completing our 100 smart cities and we are now focusing on a magical figure of 4,000 cities going to be smarter in India. So it's all about IoT. So what to, to yesterday, what is the kind of data? The data which is collected through a normal uh, mechanism is what we were having. But when the moment it is coming to IoT, it's all real time. Example, you take the traffic. You have the cameras installed across the public places. And the data which is flowing from the CCTV system are assessed such a way that what is your traffic flows and at what time it is going to be peak. In a whole year when you take which time it is going to be more, which time it is going to be lesser. This kind of data is thrown to the central headquarters the way the administration wants. So the decisions are made not just based on a gut feeling or an assumption. It is on a realistic, real-time data. That is what all about IoT is uh, we are talking on a smart city. And we are talking about law enforcement. How much of field force we would require in a law enforcement to actually implement the proper law systems. Whereas again, we have the automatic number plate recognition systems or it is alternative called LPR, license plate recognition systems, along with speed violations, along with red light violations, along with uh, your, you know, illegal parking or, you know, unauthorized parking systems. So all these things are captured through the eyes of the camera, getting evaluated at the central location and extracting the right amount of data and giving to the authorities. And the enforcement can be done automatically so that there is no mode of litigation. We are talking at par, we are giving respect to the citizens. Hey, you have done a, you know, uh, low, there, there is an issue. So let's pay the fine and move on. And then you penalize them, then they get themselves corrected. And you are not going to enforce too much of, uh, you know, uh, there is no rift, there is no human interaction. It's all technologically done. So I'm just telling about one business. So similar way, there are multiple avenues are there uh, in the smart city itself. There could be uh, the garbage management was one of the challenge which India was facing, wherein there are a lot, lot of you know bins available, but then you are not able to manage it. Now it is all smart waste bins that we are using in smart city. When it is filled, the alert will automatically come. Accordingly, your tra traffic can be managed. And we are not ta talking about smart poles. Instead of the normal electric poles, we put up smart poles, wherein it can sense your weather, it can sense your atmospheric condition, it can sense your, uh, you know, uh, traffic data. So anything and everything can be clubbed into and you are even the, the 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 lighting power you know somebody has to put on and put off the power uh, everything centrally uh, can be managed and driven in in a, you know a smart pole kind of an environment which is again a technological evolution and everything of this sort is running 
based on the core infrastructure of telecom. So the telecom infra is the key. Once uh, the telecom infrastructure is right and the data uh, network is kept in the right fashion, in an affordable fashion, yes, there is a huge avenue. We can all contribute and you are empowering the citizen to act at their best. So just mentioning one, uh, you would have seen the a Kenyan young boy who was illiterate, who was making an electric car and becoming a viral uh, for, uh, you know, for a period of very huge, uh, this thing, it was uh, uh, viral in social media. So how would this happen? Everything based on the platform that we are building. So let's work together, uh, just join hands together and let's grow together. We were uh, sharing the same past and we are heading to a brighter future. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful uh, opportunity given to us. We'll be meeting, uh, we'll be available offline for discussions at the stalls. And thank you once again, Grant.